welcome back to the channel today we're going to be changing the dsg fluid and filter on a 2009 mark 6 golf with a two litre tdi might seem counterintuitive starting off removing the intake um, but we need to get to the filter which is sat uh, on top of the DSG box which is underneath the air filter, air intake and the battery. So the battery needs to come out, the battery tray needs to come out, the air intake and pipe work need to come out first. So I'll take all this out and then we'll have a look at what we are left with. Okay, so that's the air box out. So now it's time to take out the battery. So now the battery and battery tray have been removed, we can see the DSG filter which is there for you. We're not going to do this yet, we're going to dive underneath and we're going to take the under tray off and get access to the bottom of the box. So I will see you down there. Welcome to the underneath. Um, as you can see the vehicle is supported um, on axle stands of some sort at the front and it's on a block of wood at the rear. The jack is here to provide additional height. If the jack fails for whatever reason or collapses, the jack stands provide enough height for me to be able to get out from underneath of here. Um, so no need to worry that that's there. That's not supporting any dangerous load of the vehicle. It's just there for a bit of additional height. So normally there will be three TX30 screws across the back and then the rest around the sides and front are T25s. Uh, unfortunately, one of the T30 bolts um, snapped and I've drilled and re-tapped that one, but I've used a cap head Allen bolt for that. Um, so that's why I need that tool, but if you've not broken yours, you won't. It's always a good idea to put some anti-seize on these bolts, um, especially because they're steel bolts going into an aluminium subframe. Um, obviously this one got galled up and snapped and has had to be drilled out, tapped and replaced. Um, but these are already coated um, in anti-seize, but I would suggest anyone that has them out does it while they have the chance.
Then we have the last one at the front. And this will just slide back. And down. Welcome to underneath the engine. So the under tray has now been removed, as you saw. This unit here is the DSG gearbox. Um, or DSG, direct shift gearbox, gearbox. Um, and we are going to locate the drain plug, which is this plug here. So there is no fill plug for this box. The factory method is filling through the drain. We're not going to be following that method because I don't have the right tools to do that. And I suppose this is the point now where this is no longer a uh, instructional tutorial, but this is me telling you how I um, service this transmission. Um, it's up to you to decide how you want to service or change the fluid in yours. So no liability accepted here for what you do, as per all of my other videos. Uh, but let's get this drained um, and I'll show you what we do from there if we're not following the factory method. So this is a 14 millimeter hex fitting. I'm not going to make you watch this drain out completely, um, but I'll bring you back when that's fully drained. So while the gearbox is draining below, um, what we'll do is remove this filter housing, um, and that should help us create some, or well, let some air get into the system, help the fluid drain faster. This has got to come out anyway, so now's a perfect time to do that. So this is now helping the gearbox drain its fluid faster because we're allowing air back into the system as the fluid is draining out. It's a very viscous fluid, it takes a long time to fill, it takes a long time to drain. Um, so again, I'm not going to make you watch this. Um, I'll bring you back when this is fully drained and I'll explain what we're going to do next. Okay, so the fluid has been draining for a little while now. Um, we're going to pop the filter out now. Um, so you can see this is a Febby filter, part number 44176, and that's exactly the same as the part that we are going to replace it with. So this just lifts out. And we can let that drip into the housing, and then we'll take it away. So obviously we need to clean up the spilt oil that is around this housing, um, but we're not going to do that before we replace the filter because what we don't want to do is drag any of the dirt and debris that is around here into the filter housing, because that's not going to help us. So what I'm going to do is replace the cap briefly, and we're going to drop down underneath the car again to take a look what's going on down there. just to keep any debris out, or even what we could do actually is hand tighten that filter housing back down and now we can clean up any spilt fluid without the risk of getting any dirt into the filter housing itself. I will see you underneath. Right, as you can see now, we've finished draining. Now, this is potentially where people face issues with this. So we've drained off some fluid, but we've not drained all of it out, despite removing the drain plug. Now, this is where we need to be really careful and not forget this step or not miss this step. So there is a plastic snorkel inside 
here which controls the level. Now we also need to take this out to drain the box properly and fully. So this is an 8mm Allen for the plastic snorkel. It's very, very loosely input. Be very careful with it. Try not to break it. So you can see the snorkel coming out now. Along with, there we go, the rest of the DSG fluid. Do not forget this step. Otherwise you will have a severely overfilled transmission. I'm going to let this finish draining and I will bring you back when it's done. Okay, so the bulk of the oil is now drained. It's dripping very slowly. I'm sure that we could leave it for, I don't know, another hour and it would still be dripping slowly. Um, but I've not got all day and we can't wait for this to drip into it. Drip its life away for the sake of 50 mil. Um, so we've got the plastic snorkel here and we're going to reinstall that back up into the box. So we're just going to do it by hand to start with. Please don't use an impact. Now, there is a torx back for this. It's three Newton meters, which is comically well, not tight. I've got a torque wrench that will do it though. So let's. There you go. Three Newton meters. Now we're going to give the drain hole surface um, a final clean. Make sure there's no sharp edges with your finger. The drain plug that we cleaned earlier, we're going to reinstall it with the same washer. Um, I have previously reused this one and uh, not seen any issues with doing so. So we'll tighten that by hand for now. And then we're going to torque this down to 45 Newton meters. So now that's done, I'm going to take you back up to the top with me. So when you're using this method, um, so you can research it online yourselves if you so wish, um, it's called the measure and refill method. Effectively what we're doing is measuring the amount of fluid that's been removed from the gearbox in this manner. Um, and then what we're going to do is add the same amount of fluid back in. So the number that you are looking for, theoretically, uh, this is a six-speed DSG, we are looking to remove 4.5 plus or minus 100 millilitres-ish litres of oil from this gearbox. Now, we're going to lose some to the filter. We're going to lose some to the pan. We're going to lose some in the filter housing. We're going to lose some in various places. So as long as you're close to four and a half, um, generally the figure that you put back in, is four and a half plus or minus 100 mil. So maybe we'll go for 4.6, who knows. Um, but <clears throat> this is the bottle that I've drained the pan into with a scale on the outside. This is a good bottle. Um, some have the scale on the side with the pouring nozzle, which isn't that helpful because sometimes it gets obscured. This is on the other side, great waste bottle, perfect. So you can see that we are here in the bottle and 4.5 is there. So we are very, very close um, and exactly what we're gonna do is put four and a half litres back in. As I said before, this is not the factory method. I don't condone this. I'm just telling you the way that I service uh, this gearbox. This is all at your own risk. Um, so now we'll leave this draining because this is irrelevant. Now that we've got close to four and a half litres, I will show you how we can refill this box without any special tools. 
Welcome back to the top. So now I'm going to show you how to fill this gearbox without any special tools. So as I said before, we're going to go for four and a half, 4.6 litres into this gearbox. Now, this method is not a fast method. Um, it's a pretty tough one in winter as well when the fluid is very viscous. This is definitely best done in summer if you can. If you live in a hot climate, brilliant. If you live in a climate that's cold all the time, I can't help you. Um, maybe heat the bottle slightly uh, in, with some warm water on the outside of them before you start. Um, but this is going to take a long time, maybe 40 minutes-ish to fill this box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to fill the box. I'm not going to make you sit through 40 minutes of me filling a box. Even sped up, that's tedious at best. So let me show you how we do it. So you can see there's some fluid still left in there. Uh, we, you probably could suck that out, um, but I'm not going to bother. The fluid doesn't look too bad, it doesn't smell burnt, I don't have any issues, um, so we're just going to leave that as is. So that's the filter that we're going to have to use, and this is going to be a painful process. Now, I've got half a litre left over from when I last changed this, so we're going to start with this and we're just going to let it drip into the funnel you can see at the rate the uh, funnel is filling here how slow this is to drain through into the gearbox it doesn't need any special tools but it does need a lot of patience so the only thing I can suggest is filling the funnel in the hope that the mass of the fluid forces the rest of it down faster. But either way, this is a very long process, not very interesting to watch. So I'll spare you that and I will bring you back when we've put four and a half litres into this transmission. Welcome back. This is finally uh, finished draining. I will stick a note uh, on the video how long it took. I'll have a look at the timestamps on the video um, for that for you. So now we need to go and reinstall the filter. So as I said before, that's the uh, part number 44176. Uh, it's a Febby part. In that box, you're going to get a new filter and a new O-ring for the filter housing. So what we'll do is we'll put the new filter in first, then we'll do the O-ring. So brand new filter. So all we're going to do, it comes with the O-ring pre-installed. Um, so we're going to get a tiny bit of oil from the filter housing. Let's just get that on that O-ring. And then what we're going to do is place this gently on there so it's loose. And then we're just going to press down to seat that in position. So that's now seated, it's built more fluid but that's fine. Now we need to remove the uh, o-ring from this. I'm going to do this off camera because I don't want to risk it getting any debris into the open filter housing. But I've just removed the o-ring there. Then we're going to roll the new o-ring down into this groove like so. And then using some oil that's just on the threads, we're just going to put a light coating on that surface. Then we're going to install the filter housing by hand. So we can feel that that is now seated. Just mop up a few bits of rogue oil here. Then we're going to torque this housing down to 20 newton meters. And we'll just give that a final wipe down.
And now we are done effectively with the fluid change and we just need to put everything back that we took out. So I'll move you over to the stand and we will put everything back in. Right, so we've got you up on the fuse box so you can see everything going back in. So that's the battery tray now located. Moved you over to the uh, engine cover so you can have a better view of what's going on. So I'm just doing these hand tight. There probably is a torque value somewhere, um, but as I said, I'm just going to go hand tight. The battery cable should sit in these grooves here. There should be a clip on here which secures it, um, but I think mine is mine is missing or broken. But maybe we can add something uh, back in to secure that. that fits and that fits that's good so we use that as a clip to uh, hold this battery cable so that cable is now nice and secure not flapping around, which is great. So I'm going to tuck this out the way. If it wants to stay there, it doesn't. It's fine. So we've got the battery to go back in. We're not going to do this. We're going to not forget to put the um, weather shielding on it. Let's do that first. Along with the tie down or mount for the battery. Again, I'm just going with hand tight on this one. Now we can add its little house. Cheers. Which is now on. Just add the positive terminal battery make sure that's nice and secure and then we will dig the negative terminal out and make sure the cover is sat down on the back correctly, which it now is. So we will add this on. Make sure that's nice and snug. And now we will close it away in this little fabric house. Now we're going to add our airbox or lower airbox in. It takes a bit of uh, fiddling to get it in the right place. Um, once it's there, you can locate it on its dowels. We have 
one locating screw. Add in the plastic tray. And we can add the filter back in. Make sure that's seated correctly. Just adding the top cover for the front uh, airbox mount. Now we can re-add the upper airbox and MAF assembly. So once that's mounted, we can secure the hose on. We're now going to screw in the uh, Phillips screws for the airbox. Don't gun these in hard, they just need snugging down. So that's now secure. So we can bring our hoses back round. I might add a bit of silicon grease to this one. You saw how difficult that was to get off. And I'll wipe up the silicon grease that we've got everywhere. Well, that should help us not break anything the next time we need to take that off. that back onto there. So redo our hose clamp and we can plug our math back in and secure our hose. Now, the thing left to do on the underside is to replace the under tray. I'm not going to currently do that at present um, because after this, uh, I'm going to be doing a timing belt change that you're going to see in an upcoming video. Um, so no point putting that back on to take it back off again tomorrow. Um, so in short, that is how you change the DSG fluid or how I change the DSG fluid on this model of VW six speed DSG. I'll put a link to all of the parts used in the video description. I'll also include any special tools, not that I think I've used any for this. I'll also include links to the fluid used and where to get those. And if there are any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comments in the video. I'll try to make sure I get back to all of those. And I'd like to thank you for watching and subscribe if you'd like to see more car content.